All right, hello everybody. My name is Master Chen, and you are watching or listening to Twitter Word Frequency. Welcome to my talk. All right, so let's start with who I am, or who am I? I'm a prior B-side speaker, where I spoke about being a con man and uh, working in Vegas surveillance. Uh, I spoke at DEF CON on VoIP security, and uh, as well as uh, DC Sky Talks on automate your stocking, which uh, we'll kind of cover a little bit about today. And uh, most recently, the Recon Village in the last uh, few years, uh, where we talked about uh, Stalker in a Haystack, uh, URL shortened by any other name, which was last year, and of course, uh, this year and this talk. Just, uh, it's virtual now. <laughs> uh, you can find me at Chenbox. Uh, that is my uh, handle on, uh, on most social media, so, so feel free to follow. All right, so uh, let's get into this, and, and, and let's start from where... Uh, we are at this point in time, and, and that I think that'll that'll help us understand um, where my mindset is uh, when it comes to uh, comes to this talk. So, of course, I started with automate your stocking, where you know I was digging into uh, my Twitter research. This is bad, and uh, we learned that uh, during the DC Sky Talks a couple of years ago. Uh, so, the following year, I did stalker in a haystack, where we figure out how to not be stalked, or at least we can detect. Uh, cyber stalking, and that was that was good. <laughs> um, and now I've gotten recently into political sports betting, or you know, market speculation, which is part of the story. Uh, and profiling, uh, I mean, profiling like social media profiling uh, on on different uh, accounts. And of course, I do have a degree in psychology, so all this kind of wraps up into where we are at this point. So these these five pieces um, are what kind of has has you know gotten around this uh, this research here? So about this talk, I'm going to start with the original goal and how I came up with uh, what I was researching at that at that moment, um, why that failed, and why uh, we move on to what it is currently now uh, as I'm presenting this, and what I would like um, my current research to be in the future. So before we get into all of that, though, let's talk about caveats and disclaimers and warnings. Oh, my. I'm bad at that. Anyway, um, first caveat or first disclaimer is uh, for those who have followed my work before, you know that I've said uh, I anal or I anus, which is I am not a lawyer and I am not a stalker. Um, I'm going to add something new to that because I'm very new to the whole uh, data science uh, thing. Uh, I've only recently gotten into um uh, using pandas and scikit-learn and and numpy and all these different um, data analytics tools. Uh, so I've add I've added inads. I am not a data scientist. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a stalker, and I am definitely not a data scientist. But I'll try my best. Uh, so this project is a work in progress, um, and I'm hoping that after I explain kind of what we're doing here today, um, that maybe I can get some help from the community to further this project, or at least now that I've defined the basics, I can continue and, and make this something very strong. Um, this is a neutral tool. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not building what I'm building today for uh, stocking purposes, for, you know, this is just a tool. You use it how you want, but of course, as always, I'm not gonna be held uh, responsible for, uh, for what you do with, with my research. Um, and I did not stand on the shoulders of giants for this research. What I mean by that is, um, I know that there's a lot of research already in the space when it comes to frequency analysis, uh, word frequency analysis, uh, uh, you know, sentiment analysis, NLP, um, not neuro-linguistic programming, but natural language processing. Um, I know that there's all that research out there, and I, I barely used any of it. Um, so um, I would like to integrate that later, um, but I just want to let you know that for this particular talk, um, that was really not used. So um, th it is definitely a work in progress. All right, so uh, again, for those of you who know me, I'm, I'm not a sports guy. Uh, I've only recently gotten into hockey and you know I've always been a UFC fan, but other than that, I'm not a, a sports person. So I've never been into the sports book, but what there's one, one thing I know about being uh, in Vegas for, for my entire life is that there's a sports book for every market. It doesn't matter what the market or what the speculation is, there's a sports book for it or, or a betting market for it. And that's kind of where we start our story. 
So if anybody's ever heard of predictit.org, it's a market for uh, political sports betting. So you can bet on, you know, who you think the next president's going to be, not just in America, but globally, you know, uh, pick a country, pick a state, pick a, you know, um, uh, impeachment hearings, <laughs> um, uh, who will run the White House, who's going to be the VP pick. All of these different markets are on predictit.org. Um, and so you can you can make a fair amount of money if you're if you know what you're doing, uh, or you can just have a casual bet and and just be right with a few dollars and cents. And so, um, and specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, President Donald Trump's uh, tweets, as as that is kind of a, a famous thing here, uh, and and how it it pertains to the political sports betting market. Okay. Um, and well, let's get into that now because right now we're talking about uh, PyCount.com. Com, which is a tweet counter that's out there on the internet. Um, and it keeps track on a weekly basis of the president's tweets, as well as the VP, the White House, uh, and the POTUS accounts. Um, and this is all uh, geared towards the, the tweet market that Predictit uh, offers or used to offer. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, but we're talking about uh, Twitter, uh, you know, the Twitter markets. Um, again, this is on a weekly basis. The question or the market is, how many uh, tweets will the president tweet out uh, for this particular week, starting from Wednesday of this week and going on to uh, Wednesday of the next week? It could be anywhere from, you know, 50, which is, which is highly unlikely, uh, all the way up to, you know, 300, 400, you know, and, and that's, that's what I was analyzing uh, beforehand. Now, I wanted to know if the profits could be based off of analytics um, and, you know, could the... Um, could I anticipate what he would be tweeting based off of current events, news, drama, uh, anything that's out there uh, in the global space? And the goal, the goal with this original research was to get the president to pay for my energy bill. <laughs> so if I made enough money uh, on this predictit.org market, um, could I pay the ener my energy bill at the house um, with, with Donald Trump's tweets? That's, that's where I was going with this whole thing. So again, prior research is um, the frequency of the tweets, how often he would tweet in that week. And, and I was capturing, as you'll see here um, in, in the CSV file on the right side of the screen here, um, I was capturing um, on a weekly basis, how many tweets? How many tweets did he do in this week? Well, we see 68 in the week of, uh, of uh, April of 2019. Uh, we see 137, 140, 141. So these are all... Um, a, a rolling tally or a running tally of of his tweets, and of course you graph it um, using um, using Jupiter, a Jupiter notebook. You know you, you you graph it and see the frequency here, and then you ask yourself, you know, uh, was this peak here due to um, impeachment drama? Was this due to some sort of um, scandal or emergency in the Middle East? What caused these peaks of tweets? Was it just somebody getting on the president's nerves? Um, these were all the questions that I was asking at the time, but there's a problem. Uh, Predictit.org actually stopped their their tweet markets. So while while Predictit is still around, um, they no longer offer um, uh, you the ability to to bet on, on on tweets. And so all of this research has kind of just stopped. You know, so they they changed their offerings. They they started to offer other markets that just weren't working fast enough. It, you know, these other markets aren't. Uh, resolving on a weekly basis. And so my profits slowed to a halt. Um, and so because of that, this whole project that I was working on as far as tweet frequency, um, it, it kind of took a, pack, uh, a back burner. And I, I kind of forgot about it for a couple of months. Um, but um, it got resurrected. And so uh, the project lives. And, and I'll tell you why. So I tweet on a regular basis, and I tweet very vague, vague things. Um, and, and, and that's on purpose, uh, I would say. Um, it could be a Zen of the day quote, it could be uh, something obscure, or just something that's on my mind, right? Because that's exactly what Twitter is used for. You you post something just because it's, it's something that you're thinking about, and then you just let it out there. It's not always political. It's not always socially driven. It's just a thought that's on your mind. Well, I had one of my followers um, kind of get uh, a little bit offended or had a little bit of ruffled feathers here um, with one of my tweets. And so uh, he kind of got mad at me and, you know, it was, it, 
I wasn't being political, but the vagueness of my tweet allowed uh, this particular person to uh, project their political ideals on on my tweet. So um, I thought about that for a while, and I could have gotten mad and, and, and you know, gotten back and forth with him, um, but I didn't. And instead, like, I don't get mad, but I will turn you into research. And, and that's what's bringing us here today. So... Again, the target projected their beliefs on me and the meaning of my tweet, even though there was no correlation there. There was nothing to, to draw conclusions from. Okay, And so blindsided by rage, meaning that I had no idea that, I, that this was going to be happening, um, but I asked myself, could I have seen this coming? Could I have predicted that maybe what I tweeted um, would result in a certain outrage from not just a certain demographic, but from maybe specific people. And this is still the work in progress. So um, who are we targeting um, with, with what uh, we're working with today? Well, as, as stated in the last slide, we're working with political opponents, or uh, we're talking about political opponents, and, and not because we're trying to be political, but just because um, this is a use case uh, for, for what we're doing here. This is a scenario. Um, corporate marks. We could use what we're going to do today for, you know, spear phishing or uh, maybe password lists or some sort of targeted um, execution of, of an attack. Um, cyber bullies, you know, there are plenty out there. And wouldn't you want a leg up if you knew the type of vocabulary that they were using, uh, the uh, way in which they tweet, the sentiment behind their tweets, and maybe you could... Uh, you know, work for a better outcome uh, against your cyber bullies because yes, they are definitely out there. Now, sadly, I have to address this. Uh, this also has some stalker interests, um, but remember what I said before and in my previous research, stalker interest, this is bad. While it can be used for stalking, I do not condone it. I, I think we've, we've crossed that already, yes? Okay, so what are we talking about? Well, everybody knows Twitter is a gold mine for OSINT and recon, okay? Um, and, and, and it's not a secret. It's, it's very well known, and it's, it's that way by design. Um, not everybody has a private account, and, and it kind of ruins the fun if you are on a private account. So um, Twitter, we know as a publicly shared sentiment. If you're going to put it on Twitter, you have to expect that uh, it can be analyzed, it can be scraped, it can be mined, it can be... Um, used for research, such as today's research. So what we're doing, though, is we're making an at-a-glance picture of what this profile, a uh, target profile, um, is about, what it's all about. So, um, you know, the term at-a-glance, what I'm talking about here is instead of instead of having to scroll through an entire timeline to understand what this particular profile is all about, what if we could just take a look at a dashboard or, or just one screen and understand the sentiment of that uh, Twitter profile? That's, that's something that uh, I think would be very valuable. Why? Why are we doing this? Well, um, because I can, because we can. We're hackers, uh, and, and this is what we do. Um, we look at something. We look at a problem. We look at maybe a scenario that has recently happened to us, and we say, okay, I know how to fix that, or I know what I can do about that. So yes, because I can, because we can. Remember, we're hackers. All right, and we also want to do this because um, this gives us an insight into tendency of the profile. Okay, uh, again, and, and the goal is here to to find maybe quicker red flags, maybe catch that outrage um, before uh, it bubbles up and, and, and blindsides us. Okay, and of course, uh, as with anything, we could use this for later weaponization. Uh, we could turn this into something that could be an offensive tool if needed, of course. Uh, we're talking about password lists, uh, further social profiling, uh, maybe psychological profiling, uh, and troll bots. You know, um, maybe they could have a conversation with themselves. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to look at a couple of things. Uh, we're going to track a small sample size of the uh, recent tweets in the timeline and an ongoing sample, of course, as we add that programmatically. And we're going to be doing our analysis on uh, word frequency, word choice, uh, retweet frequency, um, and hashtag usage. That's actually, uh, of course, as we know, it's pretty important. 
Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the code, but before we do, a uh, couple of notes here. Um, and you can play the game at home, actually. So now, by the time that you're watching this, um, this should be available and public for you and your consumption, so you can follow along with what I'm doing here uh, in the next few slides. So uh, I'll go ahead and give you a minute to, to take that uh, link down, um, and we'll go from there. Actually, there's a couple more uh, points here. So uh, it's just basically my GitHub handle and uh, you know the, the name of the project, Twitter Word Frequency. Um, now we scraped, I scraped um, this uh, information with Python and it's all Python, all of this is Python. Um, but I scraped with a, an actual Python file um, and then I use a Jupyter notebook for more um, analysis. And there's a reason uh, for that as well. And we'll see that in the next couple of slides. Uh, in the background here, you'll see a code snippet of the actual script, uh, which pulls the timeline. Um, now there's a couple of things here. It either um, checks to see if the timeline has already been saved on your machine. And if it hasn't been saved on your machine, it then goes out uh, using the Twitter API um, to grab uh, the latest uh, timeline uh, of your subject or of your target. Okay. Now in the foreground here, you're going to be seeing um, a, a snippet from the Jupyter Notebook. And I used the Jupyter Notebook because um, maybe I wanted to run a little snippet of the code without running the entire script. So a lot of the code is going to be the same, um, but with uh, with Jupyter Notebook, you know, and I'm sure everybody who's in data science already remember, I'm not. Um, you you already understand that you can take these pieces of uh, or snippets of code and just run those individually and change things as new data becomes available to you. All right, so let's talk now about the analysis. Okay, so this first analysis is actually. Um, myself. This is my own um, analysis on, on my handle at Chenbox. Um, so on the left side, uh, you'll see a couple of the words here that I've used at a, on a regular basis. Of course, with, with the most current recent events, you see mask is used there six times. Uh, Twitter, okay, because I've, I've had opinions about Twitter on Twitter. Okay, so that's, that's there. Um, now you'll notice that these red blotched out uh, pieces are actually, um, these are Twitter accounts, okay? Um, and, and how often I've referenced uh, these Twitter accounts. Uh, so this can be a way that we can, again, we're talking about at a glance, um, we can see um, who we're looking at, um, who uh, we're associating with uh, quite quickly and, and right right up front, okay? Um, on the, in, in the middle on the, on the top side, you'll see um, I have a red dot right next to RT. RT meaning, of course, retweet, and you'll see that my retweet frequency is about 54 times in a 200 tweet sample. That's what that means. Remember, this is out of out of 200 tweets. Um, 200 uh, tweets, uh, 54 of those were retweets of other people. And of course, uh, all these Twitter accounts um, that are blotched out. Um, I think it would be safe to assume that if I'm not mentioning somebody, um, I'm definitely retweeting them. Um, at the bottom, you'll see uh, 2638, which is the word count uh, associated with the last 200 tweet sample of my own personal account. Uh, I'm using mine as a base as a baseline. And on the right side, um, you'll see um, my use of hashtags and, of course, its frequency. And at the bottom is the um, association with the histograms. It's a, it's a histogram uh, associated with uh, with the hashtags uh, there at the top. The, and there's there's my handle, so you know that this uh, particular uh, slide was for for my uh, own profile analysis. Uh, okay, so um, remember that person that I said got kind of angry with my vague tweet. Well, this is uh, this is the analysis slide of of his account. So um, you'll see that there's a couple of differences, obviously, because um, we're not exactly the same. Um, on the left side, we'll see uh, a couple. He's he's mentioning a couple of people who uh, are blotched out, um, not as frequently as maybe I do, but you know these these profiles are in in the scan that I've seen. Uh, you'll see his retweet frequency is 178. So so out of 200 out of a 200 tweet sample, we're talking about 178 of those uh, being retweets retweets, um, and um, I also hit the uh, a red dot on the word I, because I was just kind of curious as to see um, how often somebody is um, is using I uh, in a sentence. I'm sure that there's a psychological profile uh, based off of um, the use of that word, right? 
And at the bottom, we see um, the word frequency, 3788. I know that there's math that we can do on uh, this word pro or on this um, on this word count uh, as far as uh, calculating you know, the types of words that uh, we're using, um, how big they are, how small they are, et cetera. And, and another interesting thing about uh, this particular analysis is uh, the histogram on the right side um, indicates that um, this particular individual only uh, tweet or only uses a hashtag uh, once, like uh, one and done. So um, I found that to be interesting. Uh, again, uh, this is for the uh, at my target. Um, this is not the actual Twitter account, obviously, um, <laughs> but I, I thought I had to uh, identify it somehow. Now, lastly, I'd like to, uh, you know, I use myself as a baseline. Uh, this is the targets um, dashboard analysis. And uh, this next one is uh, actually uh, President Donald Trump. And we'll see, of, co uh, of course, a couple of, uh, of, of key features here. Uh, on the left, we don't see the word I, uh, actually we do, but it's no more than 20 times. Now, uh, for those of us who, who might think that uh, President Trump is a little bit of uh, a narcissist, uh, we might be kind of surprised uh, to see that he's only uh, tweeted the word I about 20 times uh, in a, in a uh, 200 tweet sample. At the bottom there, we see 3,400 words. So these, these are all you know kind of interesting, the same stats. Um, he's retweeted only 96 times um, in, in a past 200 tweet sample. Of course, uh, this piece is not so um, surprising because we know that he uses a lot of his own um, words uh, <laughs> in, in his tweets. Um, but uh, back to the left side really quick, um, the only blotched out account there, um, I don't know if anybody wants to take a quick guess at what that is. I know I can't uh, wait necessarily for your answer as, as uh, this is the closest that we can get to um, audience participation at the moment. Um, but uh, yes, if, uh, if you guessed that that was his own account, you are correct. So he's, what I'm saying here is he's mentioned himself in his own tweets about 46 times. Uh, so that might be a, uh, an indicator of narcissism, maybe tweeting in the third person. We'll have to analyze further for that. Uh, and on the right side, we'll see um, our, again, our histogram and, and hashtag matching. So um, uh, President Trump has maybe tweeted a couple of things with hashtags, but of course the recurring one is MAGA. Is anybody surprised? I don't think anybody is. I'm not. Uh, and actually that would have been three if he didn't uh, add emojis to that uh, third MAGA there at the, at the bottom. Uh, so again, my point is um, all of this was programmatically, programmatically, excuse me, um, all of this was programmatically um, scraped and and put together so that we can, at a glance, take a look at what um, a target is talking about. Uh, and and this is done. I understand that you know this could be easily done through APIs and uh, other research. Uh, this is my own um, basic whiteboard. This is my own starting from scratch um, analysis of these targets. Myself, uh, President Trump, because of the sports book uh, betting. <laughs> And of course, uh, somebody who got really mad at me for um, something that was really vague. Uh, okay, so now that that's uh, an overview of the data, really quickly, let's take a look at the insights here. Uh, so some of the insights. Um, it seems like, of course, um, retweets indicate shared sentiment. Well, duh. But the question is, uh, from who? Who are we sharing a sentiment with? Uh, this might give us insights, of course, into um, who a person is associating with, or how frequently, or um, how how closely related these ideals may be that they share, depending on the retweet, of course. Um, and of course, we, we see narcissism in hashtags. So uh, you may see uh, a lot of um, a lot of your your own. Actually, okay. So there's a couple of things here. Um, I did forget to uh, include. Um, uh, a screenshot that I have of my target uh, tweeting himself, like his own handle um, in uh, in the hashtag. So it was hashtag his own handle. Uh, and I, I found that to be very narcissistic, um, kind of interesting, uh, but th that's something that I wanted to uh, piece in there. So I do apologize for not having that screen cap in there, uh, but I found that to be interesting. And that's why I put that in, in, in here in the insights. Um, and uh, repeating hashtags to me, of course, again, this is this is kind of obvious when it comes to somebody who's a regular Twitter user. Um, it depicts brand or focus, you know. 
And of course, we see that with with, with the repeating hashtags. Um, now, I've noticed that word frequency, um, the word frequency count, significantly drops off after stop words. Um, so, you know, I have a rudimentary uh, introduction to uh, natural language processing, so I understand a little bit about tokenization and um, what stop words are. Stop words being like uh, in the very small um, words that kind of glue the English letter, uh, language together, right? Um, and so again, after after those words are scraped off the top, the the frequency of those words uh, of other words really drop. And of course, uh, for those who are linguists, may already know that. Um, now, um, obviously, with what we've uh, with what I've presented today, we know that descriptive statistics are as far as we can get um, without any sort of uh, further um, analysis with better tools. Better tools being, of course, uh, neurolinguistic. Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, natural language processing, uh, maybe some other uh, types of uh, data science tools and, and uh, techniques. And so that is where this work in progress is going to be heading next. Okay, and so speaking of which, uh, where do we go from here? Okay, well, uh, of course, I want to clean up the data collection, data collection methods right now. It's, it is pretty rough, and I'd like to turn that into something that is uh, uh, easy to read and, and followed very, uh, very easily. Uh, better data visualization. Um, I quickly grabbed screenshots together, um, but of course I'd like to incorporate word clouds and other charting, maybe better charting, right? Um, dashboard of data, I'd like to clean that up so that, again, the, the whole goal is an at-a-glance uh, for, um, for a Twitter analysis, okay? Uh, now what can we do with this? Well, we could talk about uh, profile scoring. So for instance, um, leanings, whether it's a sentimental leaning, a uh, political leaning, a corporate leaning, uh, I'd like to see if we can, uh, we can understand that um, at, at a quick look. Um, the potential for extremism. Um, if, if somebody is getting mad at you for uh, a tweet that was vague enough for them to project um, meaning onto it, um, then then what is the potential for somebody to go kind of a little bit more off the rails? That's something else that I'd like to look at. Um, and of course, um, ongoing, uh, me being a psychology buff, um, you know, ongoing psychological profiles and red flag notifications. If there's a red flag with anything that we see here in, in their timeline, um, can we detect that? And of course, um, I am, I'm almost certain that there's already research out there. I'd like to continue uh, looking at that myself and, and, and building from there. So features to incorporate, I've said it a lot already. Um, natural language processing, I think that'll be a very, uh, a very good thing to add in here. Uh, sentiment analysis, also part of, part of that space. Uh, a mirror bot. <laughs> uh, really quickly, what I want to talk about there is, is um, if we know how our target speaks, can we make a bot that kind of talks to themselves? I think that'd be kind of funny to watch. Um, Hopefully it doesn't get anybody banned, but I think it'll be, uh, again, it'll be funny to see. Just as a funny project, this is all just, it's just jokes, folks. It's just jokes. Um, now, um, I want to build off of the prior research that uh, I, I, myself, and, and the community has done, uh, including my, my stalker research and, and uh, anti-stalking research and anything else that the community has done, uh, I'd like to incorporate in what I'm doing now. Um, and even though we've, even though today I've only shown uh, three profiles, I'd like to do a quick uh, mass script, a, a mass scripted analysis of maybe everybody that is following me or everybody that I'm following, uh, and just see um, what kind of results um, are in their timeline. Remember, these are public timelines, and of course, um, I don't want to hit any rate limits, so we'll do, we'll do it slowly. Uh, some some future questions that are on my mind when it comes to uh, this is. Uh, can I get a target to talk to themselves uh, and agree or disagree? I think that would be funny. That's that's what I was mentioning with the, the mirror bot. Um, can a person have a conversation with themselves and disagree on their own maybe extremist points or non-extremist points, you know? Uh, next question is, uh, you know, can outrage be predicted? You know, that's an opinion that I, that's something that I brought up um, uh, prior or earlier in, in this talk as well. Um, could that be predicted based off of what is in the current events in the news uh, and what's going on globally uh, at, at the moment? Uh, next one. Of course, uh, any questions that uh, the audience may have for me, I would definitely want to put that into this project. So uh, to summarize, <clears throat> 
Who said nothing came, uh, nothing good came out of sports betting? I think uh, I think there's uh, some benefit here. I'm glad that I went down this rabbit hole. Uh, now, sharing vague sentiments can can still make frenemies. Uh, you know, apparently, I I was not expecting that, even with uh, today's climate. But hey, it is what it is. Um, now, remember, don't get mad. Uh, you know, don't get mad. Don't feed the outrage. Just don't get, don't, you know, don't send the rage back. Just get productive. Take what you have and turn it into research. That's been, that's been my guiding light for the past five years, maybe longer. Um, start somewhere. Like I said, this project is definitely a work in progress, um, but I'm going to start somewhere. And of course we build. Uh, okay. So fork me. <laughs> There's the link again, the GitHub link. If you didn't get it before, um, Twitter word frequency. And, oh, sorry, I'll give you a couple seconds on that one. A couple more. <laughs> and resources. So the top link is actually uh, another, uh, uh, it's college speech on uh, natural language processing and, and, the, and how that goes. Uh, and then, of course, um, oh, these next two, uh, these next two links are very good. I'll let you check that one out uh, because uh, those are actually uh, kind of in line with what I'm trying to do but on a massive scale for myself. Like I'm trying to do this on a massive scale. Uh, what these last two things are doing specifically for Donald Trump's uh, tweet account. Uh, thank you very much. And, and that uh, concludes my talk.